So what do you get when you plug in a 400G accelerometer into a breadboard connected to a microcontroller? Nothing, because it's a 400G accelerometer. How am I supposed to test it on this breadboard? Hello everyone. This is a continuation of a series that I am using an LLM like ChatGPT or Claude to help program in embedded systems like the STM32. In the previous videos, we did pretty much simple things like inputs and outputs. But in this video, I want to try doing something a little bit more difficult and to really see what ChatGPT and Claude uh, can do. So since I'm working on a project that requires me to communicate with a device using SPI, let's see if ChatGPT or Claude or both can successfully allow me to communicate with this device using SPI. The device that I'm using is an accelerometer that can measure 400 Gs. That is a very high G accelerometer. A typical accelerometer would be in the range of like 4, 8, 16, 32 measures of G-forces. And that's good for measuring tilt and things like that and maybe some simple drops, but a high G accelerometer is for very high impact scenarios. I'm gonna be showing two different accelerometers, one with the 400 Gs and another one with plus or minus 2000 Gs. I found that the 400 Gs was not good for the application that I'm using it in, so hopefully the 2000 G will work. But I wanna know in the comments how you would apply these types of accelerometers, these high G accelerometers. Like in this particular series, I am showing the abridged version on YouTube, but I'm uploading a more detailed version of this video with the explanation of all of the code and everything in the members portion. So let's take it off the breadboard and put it on a hammer. But before we do that, the breadboard is actually a good place to describe the connections. This accelerometer uses 3.3 volts for its power source. So I'll use the VN for 3.3 volts and the ground for the DC negative. I'll be using the dedicated SPI pins on the microcontroller, specifically the SPI1. The first connection is SCL, which is the clock, and that's gonna go to the pin number 21, which is the SPI SCK pin. I'm attempting to wire the breadboard in a way that is a little bit more pleasing to the eye. This is definitely not necessary, but it really does look good. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. It's actually kind of difficult, but it's at the same time somewhat cathartic. The next pin is the SDA pin, which is the master out slave in the MOSI pin on the microcontroller, which is pin number 23. You'll notice that the pin designations are SCL, SDA, and so on and so forth. It's because it can also be used in I squared C mode. Speaking of the I squared C or SPI mode, the next connection I need to make is the chip select connection or the CS pin on the accelerometer. This will connect to pin number 20 because we need to be able to select between the two modes, either the SPI or the I squared C. The next pin is for the data from the accelerometer to the microcontroller, which is SDO, serial data output. It's going into the master in slave out pin, which is pin number 22. That completes all of the connections we need to make to interface this accelerometer to the STM32 microcontroller. Now let's take a look and see what GPT says and what Claude says. I'll start with GPT 4.0. I started the conversation just by asking an open question, not really knowing where to start. I'm going to do a project using the STM32 F030, and the accelerometer is the H3LIS331. Can you help? The response was promising. It was happy to help, and it started with which one we should select, SPI or I squared C, and then mentioned that we need to write driver code. So I guess we're writing driver code. And in the same response, it gave me code. But this was for the I squared C initializations. More code followed, but since we're not using I squared C, there's no sense in showing that. So let's go ahead and create another prompt. It then gave me code to use the SPI, but it, it's in the HAL hardware abstraction layer code option. And if you've watched my channel, you know that I like register level stuff. So I asked for the code to be in register level instead. I strangely find it easier to understand. Always be nice to the AI. But I don't think anybody really cares because I asked this question in Reddit 
and no stupid questions. And even though there was a healthy discussion, I got no love. I guess people aren't worried about it. ChatGPT showed the code in three different sections. The first section is the SPI initialization and ChatGPT put these in functions. This is content that you can find in the members portion of YouTube or on Patreon. If you'd like more information on how this program works or how it doesn't work, consider joining. The last two sections that GPT provided is two more functions and the main function with the never ending while loop. Strangers in the night. Mm -hmm. So here's the change that I made with the accelerometer. I soldered a couple headers on the board and soldered a six conduit cable to the headers. So we have the power wires, the red and black, and those are going to its own header here. So I can put that on the power rail and then the remaining data connections like master in slave out, master out slave in, clock and chip select is on this cable header. Fortunately, these pins are right next to each other. So I can put them on a single header like this and just plug it into the breadboard. I plan to put it on a hammer. I already put a bunch of tape on it to insulate the hammer metal. And I'm going to put this on in some way, like, I don't know. Let's see if it fits. No, it's probably too wide. So I'll probably put it like this, just giving it a way to have some kind of adherence to this hammer. And I'm going to try to get this as tight as possible so there's no ringing or springing from any looseness. Just so I make a note on video so I don't forget because I'm going to cover this whole thing. CS is green. SDO is yellow. SCL, the clock is white, I think. Yeah. And then SDA is blue. All right. So let's take this and put it on the hammer. I think I'm going to put this around the hammer first, the handle, so it'll at least stay there. I'm going to try to stretch this as much as I can so I can get a really solid mount. Okay, so ready to go. So I can probably get some readings in this direction, in this direction, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get it in this direction. I don't want to damage the, the board. It looks like this part of the hammer is still proud, but I can probably get it like if I hit it on the corner here, I can still get some kind of value on that axis, the one going this way, which I have, I can't, I don't know which one it is, uh, but I'll find out through the tests because of the way I'm hitting the hammer and what variable is changing. I put the code into STM32 cube IDE, did some debugging, but at the first attempt there was errors and I asked GPT to provide a different set of code. It did, got errors, got no results, and I went back and forth with GPT over and over again without any success. This is going through prompt and response, debugging the program while it's being executed. And then I finally just gave up and now it's time to give Claude a try. A part of me wanted to start fresh with Claude, which would be the more fair and right thing to do in a sort of head-to-head -head competition. But I really wanted to see if Claude could take the GPT program and improve it or make it work. And to make a long story short, it failed as well. Both Claude and GPT made many, many attempts to provide debugging code to reveal what may have been going wrong, but none of them were able to crack the code. So GPT 4.0 wasn't able to get it to work and Claude wasn't able to get the GPT's program to work. So let's go ahead and give Claude a try from scratch. So I prompted Claude with the microcontroller specification and the accelerometer, but I also provided Claude with the connections. I didn't do this with GPT. I'm not really sure if it makes a difference because I did check that the connections in the GPT program were correct. So let me know in the comments if you think I should have left that part out. And it gave me code with HAL libraries. I didn't specify it, so I can't really blame it. So I asked for register level instead. This is the code that Claude provided me within the STM32 cube IDE. The code was too wide for it to fit within the code snippet window for Claude, so it's better just to look at it in the IDE since we're going to be running it this way anyway. Dooby dooby doo. Do dooby doo doo. Dooby dooby doo. Do 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 do. So let's go ahead and program the microcontroller and test it out. All right, so I have 
the accelerometer plugged into the pins of the microcontroller. I have it powered. The programmer is plugged in. You can see that it's already collecting data in, in sort of a debug mode. And I'm running the STM Studio. This is the interface for the STM Studio. If you have my book, you probably already know what this looks like. And I've imported these variables from the ELF file from the build of the program. So I have the Excel X, Y, and Z. These are the colors for those variables. And then I have the Max Excel X, Y, and Z. And these are the colors for that. So I'm going to take my hammer and I'm going to go ahead and start pounding. This is about where the table has its support. So I'm going to go here. I'm not going to hit it that hard though. So that was 10,000. It should be able to reach about 32,000. 767, which is a 16-bit value. That was about 7,500. That one I couldn't even see, so I need to change the upper value. Okay, let's try that. That was about 18,000. And I reached the maximum there. So let's, that was a green. So that was X. That was a max Excel green. So let's try this. Now it's red. So that's the Y. You can see a, there's a couple other ones showing up as well. Green and red. So X and Y were showing up there. So let's try this way. dark blue that was Z definitely I can't really get a good hit on the top here yeah that was good that was about 20,000 or close to it but maybe 18,000 so there you go so it looks like Claude is the winner in this competition Claude did it pretty much seamlessly it didn't need any error correcting the only thing I did was add variables to log the data. In the last video, I think Claude won as well, so Claude is looking pretty good. If any of this video was foreign to you, this book will definitely help you get started and ease you through the process of using microcontrollers for the first time. The book is very much a cookbook style, so it, it starts off at a very, very basic level and scaffolds its way to more advanced, going into I squared C and ADC and more advanced topics like that. The link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching.